In this video, we are going to learn about how to pass a record ID from a lightning record page to a lightning web component. Uh, you will learn the significance of uh, record ID property in lightning web component. You will learn uh, how to add, in fact, a lightning web component that you have built in a record page and then exchange data. So uh, the idea is uh, or, the, or the larger goal is to build a lightning web component something like this. So as you can just see there is a this is a lightning web component basically a countdown timer. So <clears throat> given an opportunity based on the close date this countdown timer will exactly tell how many days how many hours how many minutes and seconds are left to close this opportunity you know to close this opportunity based on the close date so this is the final lightning web component which we wanted to build so what i have done is i've just broken this down into three steps part one you know we will just focus on how this opportunity can pass the opportunity id you know this opportunity record can pass opportunity id to the lightning web component because it is essential so that the lightning component will know will know uh, the opportunity ID using which it can figure out the close date of the opportunity, isn't it? So that is the first step in our whole uh, design. The the way how you pass the record ID to the lightning web component, which is what we are going to focus on this particular video, which is part one. And uh, there are two things, you know, that we will do in this uh, video. One is we will hear the term public property. <clears throat> so what is it? Uh, we will be creating the code from the scratch so this is what you know the public property is all about so all you have to do is we have to import an api decorator and then we have to you know access that back in the code as at the rate api at the rate api you know the property name so just just stand by we will just start creating the lighting web component and then let's see how this is this is working so I'm going to use a code builder, you know, feature in Salesforce, which is right now in beta to build my lightning web component and then deploy it into an org. I'm using this because uh, I don't, you know, have to install any tools, right? Especially VS Code, SLDX, SFDX, uh, Node, Java, etc, etc on my machine. Because this one gives me a virtual environment, you know, to run my code or to build my lightning web component, isn't it? So that is the reason I'm just using code builder. If you would like to know how to set up this code builder environment, please look at the description and I have given a link. There is a separate video that talks about uh, the step by step, uh, you know, process involved in setting up a code builder environment. Please feel free to, you know, take a look at that video. And now I'm going to launch this virtual environment. So it takes about uh, 30 seconds or one minute to get it launched. We'll wait for this to complete. Yep, as you can see, the virtual environment is up and running. I do have this SFTX project, and this is what I'm gonna use to build my lightning component, <clears throat> web component. So I will go here and then click on view command palette. I wanted to create a new lightning web component. So I'm gonna choose this option. I'll give a name to the component, I'll just say, opportunity countdown timer so this is the name of my my lightning web component and i'll just place this inside lwc folder perfect looks like it has just got created and uh, in the html what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to add a, a paragraph tag yeah and uh, back in my javascript i'm going to set a property or i'm going to use a property I'll just split this to the right. Yeah. So I'll define a private property or, you know, or a private property in this in this class. So this is a JavaScript class, as you can just see. What you have to do is you can just simply create, you know, a property, which is, for example, in this case, I'll just use the term, use this property name timer is equal to, yeah, it to implement. So now, you know, this is, you know, a property, a property to hold the, the, the data back in this JavaScript controller. So how do I access this back in my HTML? Very simple. I'll just bind this property using this curly brace. What I can do is I can just simply copy this timer and then put it right here. <clears throat> That's it. So when I deploy this code, I will just start seeing this, um, you know, start seeing this 
uh, value back in my back in my page but before we go and, and do the deployment let's go to the configuration file let's try to expose this you know expose this lightning web component and also let's set the targets so i would like to use this Prop, I would like to use this lightning web component right inside a record page. So I'll explicit, explicitly say that it has to be used inside record page. Yeah. So nowhere else I can use this lightning web component. So this is also done. So I built a very, very, very simple code, isn't it? I just created a property and then I'm just accessing that property back in my HTML, right? Let's try to deploy the code. I'll right click and then deploy this source to the org. Good. Now it has just got deployed. Let's try to, you know, open this org and then try to add this component. So which is right here. So this is the org in which the component has just been deployed. Let's go to the opportunities first page. And let's pick any opportunity. And let's try to bring this component, you know, right into this record page. I'll edit this page and uh, I should be seeing that component we just developed. Yeah, and uh, customer is still loading for me. All right, now we can see this opportunity countdown timer, right? So let's bring this, let's drag. Yeah, let's drag this component and then add it on this section. Yeah, and now we can just see this, right? Uh, whatever the value that I hard coded in the JavaScript file, it is appearing. Fine. Let's save this and then let's go back to the page just to see the output. Perfect. This is cool. And now comes this uh, parsing data from this record page, you know, to the lightning web component. So our intent now is right to pass this opportunity ID back to the lightning web component so that as a next step, the lightning web component inside the lightning web component, we can write additional code to check the close date of this particular opportunity, isn't it? So how do we pass this, pass this value, right? Back to this, back to this LWC component. So this is what we're going to do it. Yeah. So back in our code, we did create this timer, right, as a property, correct? So now this property, right, it's it's private to this to this class. I cannot, you know, share this property to anywhere else. And now there comes another, you know, special type of property called public property. As the name indicates, a public property can be, you know, can be exposed so that the other components can pass value so as you can just see this is the statement so to expose a public property you can you just decorate the property with at the rate API. just prefix that you know property with at the rate api once that is done so other components you know can able to send data or access this and then send data to this you know lightning web component this is fairly simple just one line of code let's say i want uh, the record id isn't it so i'll simply decorate this property with at the rate API. So this is what we call public property. Okay. In order for us to use at the rate API public property, you have to first, you know, say that you have to first use this API decorator or declare API decorator back in this, you know, the input statement. This is the first step. And then you just expose a property. Okay. With the name, with this at the rate API, you know, prefix. That's all it is. The other point, you know, should be, we should remember is this property name. So in this case, we are going to get the record ID from the page, isn't it? That's our intention, right? Get the record ID and pass it with the record ID and then pass it to the lightning web component. So there is a default, that is this, you know, um, default uh, way to access this record ID. So we have to use exactly the same, you know, case as with R lowercase and I uppercase. So this will ensure that when you add this lightning web component back in this back in the lightning web component yeah or the page record page so the record page will recognize this property and then it will just send the current opportunities record id yeah so let's see and what we can do is 
I'll have another, I'll have H tag and then I'll just say um, current opportunity record ID is. So I'm just going to simply access this property back in my HTML. That's all it is. Let's try to deploy and then see what happens. So of course I can just uh, do it you know, two ways. Either I can just go to this view command palette and then just say deploy or right click that component and then say deploy. Either way it works. So done. Let the deployment complete. Yeah, now the deployment has been completed. Let's go back to the page. Let's refresh. So I think uh, it is still being sold from the cache. So let me just clear the cache. Go to inspect, click and then hold this refresh button, click hard reload. All right, I think uh, we just have to add a couple of lines just to get this record ID. What I'll do is I will create another property, current record ID. Okay, and I'll use one of the lifecycle hooks, connected callback. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign a value to this current record ID, which is the record ID being passed from the page. So back in my HTML, I will just simply use this current record ID. That's all it is. Yeah. So now let us see what happens when we try to redeploy and then, and then, you know, look at the output. So deploy the source to org. Perfect. Now let's go back and then refresh the page. Right, it's being refreshed. Now you can see this, right? The current opportunity ID is this. So now we just witness that how automatically the lightning record page is passing the ID of you know the current ID of the opportunity, isn't it? If I just go back and then take a look at other opportunities. For example, I'll take early edge one. I can just see this ID being passed, right? So this is how you can able to pass a record ID, right? From the record page to the Lightning Web Common. Again, this is step one in our, in our, uh, uh, in our code. And uh, in the next video, we'll just take a look and then see how we can use this record ID and then try to find the close date of the opportunity so that we can further build this and then get this timer ready. So, okay, we'll just post the next video as a continuation to this and then continue from where we left off.